It's if you're doing a bigger book, I would recommend doing them individually. But for a little book like this, just folding them all at once will suffice. Tap down so that all the bottoms are the same ed, uh, length if you want bottoms the same length. But for this simple book, we're going to do bottoms same length. And uh, now what we're going to do is decide how long we want this. And what I've done is I had some leftovers from the first book that I made. So I had these left over. So I'm going to grab a couple of these and I am just going to measure. Okay, let's see. I want my book to sit inside. Can you see that? Let me get a book closer. Okay. This is the important measuring part. Pseudo measuring here. Okay, you want to be inside your book at the bottom. This is the bottom of my book. And I want it to be about a quarter inch in there. Okay, and then a quarter inch down from the top. You have to be above the dot, the so the hole, but below your um, top of the bo box or your book. So I'm going to make a mark there. Take these. Okay. Now, first thing I'm going to do here. Let's do this all together. <clears throat> and and this will make your life a little bit easier. Tap them all down so they're even. You got you've done this three times. Uh, I've used seven pages. Fold it in half. Okay, and then. Hi, that's my, my parrot, Holly. He loves to say hello when I'm recording. Um, hi, Holly. Hi, good bird. And I'm going to clip it at the bottom just so everybody stays together. Okay. Now, I have, let's just check. Everybody's together. Good. Everybody's behaving. Good. Okay. Now I have this mark, right? And if I put it in my squares here, okay, square, square, and I get my handy dandy ruler and... I uh, have it match up here and here. It should be straight. I'm following a dot here and a dot there and that line means it should be straight. Okay, so now I'm going to get my crafting knife out. Pushing firmly, going slowly. This is a great way to cut a lot of papers at once, nice and straight, um, but without a guillotine. Okay, so the first bunch already came off. And this is going to ensure everybody's the same length. You can use scissors for this. You can tear them. Almost. Sometimes near the spine, it's a little thicker. Okay, what do we got? Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we have this. Now what we want to do, we want to know how wide, okay? And uh, so we got the height. The height is good. And we want to put it in here and see how wide. So I would be saying we want it somewhere about here. I'm just making a little mark here. So I can grab my fingers on it and then I'm going to make the mark here. Make sure everybody is abutted. Make sure everybody's down. Spines are down all at the same level. Then we're going to use the square again. Okay, so we are about, move you over. We're about a quarter of an inch to that way on the square. I'm looking at this square here. I'm saying I'm a quarter of an inch that way. So I want to be a quarter of an inch. Here's my square this way, which would be about there. Pretty close. All right. It's not exact. It'll still be okay. All right. There we go. Now I'm pushing down firm. I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to go slow. Okay. Watch your fingers. Almost. Being very careful. Watching what you're doing the whole time. There, I think I'm through. All right, there we go. So now we have nice uh, similar edges and shapes. Retracting craft night for safety reasons and putting all these wonderful scraps over the yonder to be soon placed in the scrap pile. Okay, am I still super close? <clears throat> I am. I'm going to back up a little bit now. Okay. All right. We are rolling. Everything is good. We are on track. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this little clump. I'm just going to use this bulldog clip again here and hold these guys. Make sure everybody is aligned. Okay. They're, they're aligned this way. So they all are flush this way. And they also are flush this way and this way. And then we're all happy pants. Okay. So now we're going to look for where was our upsy downsy side. This is up for me. I know my butterfly is there and this is narrower than this. 
this is wider than this. Okay, so this means this is my top. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, place these. I'm going to actually take them out a little bit. And I'm going to slide them back a little, little tight. Well, no, you don't really have to do that. Just uh, place them all together and decide exactly where you want them. They have to uh, line up with the holes. Okay. And then you're going to take your pencil and you're going to mark all three of these the same place. That means their holes are going to be in the same place when you go to put the holes in with the crocodile big bite again. Okay, there we go. There's that. I got everybody's marked. Okay. Okay, can you see that? All right. That's up. Okay, taking that over there. Now I'm going to take these one at a time. Take the top one and I'm going to open it. All right. Now I'm going to fold it back on itself. Okay, right um, against the, the original fold we made. Okay, go in there and you just make sure that everybody's behaving. Okay, fold it on itself. And that is going to help me align the crocodile machine to cut in the right spots. So let me get crocodile. Here you are. I'm not moving the buttons. It's still on one eighth and it's still the small puncher. Okay. And then where those, see, this is what I have now. You can see the little dots here, here, and here. So that's where I'm going to punch. Here I go. Punch. Stay in the valley. Punch. Stay in the valley that you made. And punch. Okay. So that's one. And I know this is my top because it's, it's closer together, farther apart, closer together, closer together is the top. Okay. Take the next one. Same deal. All right. Now take these and fold it back upon itself right along the spine, uh, right where <clears throat> you put the dots and use a bone folder here to get a nice sharp crease. Nice sharp crease will let your book lay flatter and better. So I recommend uh, taking the time to make sure that's good and then go in there and just get a punch in the valley on the dot, punch in the valley on the dot and punch in the valley on the dot. Okay. So we have these, this is my top because I, these are closer, farther apart, closer, closer is the top. Okay. Now take these. Okay. Turn this over Gonna do the same thing. All right. Now I've got these same thing. Punch. 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 Okay. So now I have these. Now I realized that this is upside down. So I had my paper in upside down. So I should have checked for that first. I missed it. Maybe double check to make sure all your papers are oriented the correct way. My bad. Um, but this will still work because I can just cover that up with something if I want. So I don't see those words or I can just leave them because um, it's, it's fine the way it is. There's lots of writing space on here, but I could put something there to disguise that if it happens and believe me, it does. <laughs> okay. So we have that. And now we have our three signatures ready to be placed inside our extra adorable little book here being formed before our eyes. Um, now what you want to grab is doo -doo -doo, I'll put it right here for easy finding. There it is. Okay. Is da -da -da, this darning needle. Darning needles have a, um, a softer end. Um, so they're easy on the fingers and they're big and fat and they'll go through that uh, nice big hole that we made very easily. And I like to use embroidery thread, but you can use um, waxed linen thread. You can use uh, um, dental floss. You can use most kinds of strings as long as they're strong and they won't break. Uh, should work just fine for this. Uh, so we, there's the magic trick to knowing how much string you need to tie in your signatures. It's three times the uh, length of your spine. So one, two, three, and we cut. Put that aside. And here we go. One and two and three. And we put that aside and then we do it one more time. One, because we have three signatures. One, two, three. Okay. So we have enough of that. Now we're going to grab the string 
And the nice thing about the darning needle, the advantage is a big fat needle eye. So it doesn't take much to uh, thread this baby. You won't lose an eye trying to do that. Okay, double checking. This is the top because I got the butterfly closer uh, is near the top. Okay, so now we're just going to, we're going to start from the back of the book and work forward. Um, so I think I will put in, oh, okay. You want to go first? Okay, you're here. All right, so let's make sure that our little holes all align. Okay, there, good. Now, um, I am going to, yeah, okay, we can do it this way. That's fine. I folded it against itself like that, which means, yeah, we'll, we'll just do it that way because then that hides that. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so what you want to do is get the fold and then go in the middle and then go in the very back middle of your spine and you go through. And then you sew to go to the top one and you go through the hole. And then you pull through and you watch that. You don't want that little guy to go through. Just keep an eye on him. <laughs> Sometimes he has a mind of his own. Then you go through the bottom one and go through the bottom one of your spine and you pull through. Okay. And then you are going to, whoop, let me just get a little more string through here. Go through the middle one one more time. You might have to look here to see if you're going through the hole correctly. And then here's the whole trick in the basket. All right. So now you have two strings and your spine string. What you want to do, I call these wings. You want to take one wing and put it underneath the string and put it on this side. So you have one wing on either side underneath your spine string. Okay. So once you have that, you can maneuver these around a little bit if you need a little more string on one side, but just be careful not to put all the way through. If it does go through, you just do it again. No big deal. So you want to pull snug and then you want to tie a knot. Snug, but not tear. Okay. Snug, but not tear. And I usually tie it three times just because I don't know why. And uh, two times should suffice. Three times is just, you know, what I do. Um, you can even put a little tiny glue droplet there if you have any concern that this string will uh, slip. So I like to leave these long because sometimes I like to tie little things from them. So I will leave that as a dangly. And then what you do is fold over your signature and you give it one nice little crease with your bone folder or your finger to let it um, know that it's going to lay nice and flat that way. All right. So we're just going to do that two more times. So we have this little guy now. Um, maybe we'll put the we will put the blue one in the middle. He was looking kind of cute in the middle. Yeah, let's put the blue one. All right. Okay, so we grab another one of our strings and we just thread that darning needle eye. So easy. Love that. And then we just double check to make sure we are the right way. These are closer together. These are far apart. So closer together means the top. This is our top. Okay. <clears throat> Going through the middle here. Now we're doing the middle row through the middle hole. All right. And then through the upper one, through the upper hole. Okay. Pretty easy, right? This always ensures your uh, signatures are nice and even, and you don't have to do much fighting with your papers. There's no all involved. All right. And we're through. It just makes it pretty easy to do. Okay. Now double checking here, double checking. Also want to remind you, you have one wing on one side, one wing on the other side, and they are beneath this spine string. See that they're beneath it. It's very important. And double check to make sure you went through the right holes before you tie down. That's another big, big tip that is a learn, learn tip from the trenches. Okay. So pull snug, but not tear, and then tie your signature in one, two. I like three knots. Okay. There we go. And that was done. And then we're just going to do the fold with the finger or fold with the bone folder to give it that nice sharp crease so that your book will open nice and flat no matter where you open your book. Okay. One more and we are pretty much done this book. Okay. There was a shorter page in the back here. That's something you want to keep an eye on. <clears throat> so make sure everybody's aligned. Decide which side you want, the inside or the outside. I think I'm going to put the yellow. Get some nice contrast there. All right. Now, oops, got to thread my needle. No, go anywhere until you thread your own needle, Missy. All right. All right. Needle has been threaded. I love that. I, a blind bat could thread this needle, which is awesome. Okay. Going in my middle hole. Okay. Am I there? Okay, if I'm not there, I just got to look to see where it is. Uh, arrange these guys. 
Yep. And if they got out of kilter, you just go find them. You tell them you get back into kilter. You must have kilter. Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we know you are there. So let me just get you again. And you are at, let's see, there. There we go. Now I can see my way through now. Okay, I'm through. And I'm through. Okay. Pulling that. Going through the top. And whoop, missed half of it. That happens sometimes. Okay, going through. Whoop, almost got away on me there, Buckeye. But I caught ya. All right. Down the bottom, through the spine bottom. Out the back, double checking. Everybody's going through the right holes. Whoa, almost lost ya. All right, here we go. There we go. And pulling through. Now, organizing everybody and making sure I have my one wing on either side and I am below the spine string. Uh, snug, snug, not, not tear, but snug. Pull, knot, one knot, two knots, and three knots to completion. Yay. Okay, we got the danglies for usage at a later time. All right, folding with finger fold first and then coming along with bone folder to give the nice crease. And the bone folder is a, um, it's a suggestion. Like you don't, you don't, you, you could tear your paper if you push with the bone hold, folder too hard. So you just want to give it like a nice nudge. Like you're going this way and you really, you really have, you must comply. <laughs> uh, so there we have it. And what are you? What's that little doodad there? Are you part of the paper? What are you? Are you, oh yeah, your paper. Okay. I was wondering, I thought I had material or something coming out there. Nope. Um, Okay, so it's a very simple and easy way to make a very functional little notebook, a little journal, a little uh, writing place, a little doodle pad, um, whatever you like to do. Apparently, I had a bunch of pages going on inside, uh, upside down there. But, you know, technically, I could say, hey, the book goes this way because this particular craft paper goes, um, does that, you know, scrapbook paper, can you can orient it any way you want. So I will decide at a later time <laughs> which one is going to the front or the back. But uh, I would not let that stop you from uh, doing this. Just make sure you have your papers oriented correctly when you go forth and do this. So there you have it. We have these cute little books that are very easy to make, just made from stuff around the house and uh, some basic supplies. Uh, oh, this one I went ahead and I added these little metal things. Um... Okay, that's what they look like. These are the tiny ones, and um, I think I, uh, you can find these on Amazon or eBay. I will try and put a link below to these uh, so you can find them easily. But basically, they just require a couple of jewelry tools, um, the little needle nose pliers, because sometimes they have to be opened a little bit because they're not wide enough so that you can get your it to wrap around your book but in the meantime as i'm attaching these you can put a little dollop of glue in there um remember that i make if you like these kinds of videos please like subscribe and share if you'd like to uh, click the notification bell beside the subscribe button you will be notified every time i put out a new video but i do put videos out on mondays wednesdays fridays and saturdays you can finger squeeze these tight and then squeeze them together. Um, it is helpful to have a little rubber um, squasher and uh, pliers, I guess, and uh, uh, just squeeze them down. That gives them a really nice, super tight grab with a little dab of glue in there. That baby's not going anywhere. Okay. And uh, uh, podcasts. Uh, I have a podcast for the Paper Outpost. If you like to hear more things junk journal related, maybe while you're walking the dog or washing the dishes. Um, it's uh, new content. It's not found on my uh, videos or um, uh, elsewhere. It is uh, fresh stuff. So if you'd like to hear about uh, more stuff related to junk journals, please check out the podcast. And the podcast is um, found on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, as well as about six other platforms. And if you don't belong to one of those platforms, you can watch it or listen to it for free also on um, uh, just on your PC or your uh, tablet or your phone going to anchorfm.com, um, the paper outpost, and uh, you should be able to find it there. There's links below my uh, videos uh, in the description, drop down description box explaining where you can find the, uh, the podcast. And what else can I tell you? I can tell you that uh, favorite links and tool supplies are all linked below every video as well. So 
Um, if you're looking for something specific, just uh, go ahead and, and check out there. It's probably there. Um, and if it's not, just ask me. I'll be happy to tell you where I, I find stuff. Um, I like sharing where I get stuff with you guys. I, I, I was on the hunt for a long time, so I know what it's like to look for stuff and what's the right glue and what's the, what's the right pair of scissors. And um, there's, you know, you got to find stuff that you, works for you. Um, I highly recommend trying several different things if you can. I know I've, I've tried, uh, sometimes budget is an issue, of course, but um, try, uh, try different things. See if you like how somebody's making something and if it looked like it was pretty easy for them to make it, then that might be one worth starting with and you can always advance from there. Um, do, 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 do. And um, so kind of think about those things. And then you can also um, find the note from the bookmaker. I put this below. I put it in all my journals uh, explaining what the um, a junk journal is, what it's used for, how um, people might like to store things in it or write things in it or doodle and uh, just gives uh, an answer to that squirrely face when you give somebody a junk journal and they say, oh, what is this? And you're like, ha ha, I'm ready for you. I have the answer and you're welcome to use it. So feel free to do that. Feel free to modify it any way you like, of course, to uh, your specific needs or your theme journal, something like that. And uh, I'm just squashing these down. Oh, I think I got all four done. And I think it just gives it a nice little finished edge, doesn't it? And how cute is that? And uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. We have an awesome Facebook group where we do weekly challenges and monthly challenges. They're, they're uh, optional, not mandatory. And if you just want to come and lurk and, and check it out, or if you want to come and play and try them all and uh, post your pictures so we can see what you're making, that's awesome too. And um, having lots of fun there. I'm also on Twitter and LinkedIn and Pinterest and um, TikTok. And I think that's everything. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Fun way to make cute little books, make a book out of a box. If you want to make a book out of a box, this may be your ticket. Take care, everyone. Happy crafting, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye.